Last time, we encountered the dangerous proximity to success formula for drawing the line between attempt and mere preparation. This test has been very influential. Even so, there are some cases in which we may find that it allows a defendant to be convicted of an attempt crime too easily. McWhorter v. State is such a case. The state referred to is Alabama, and the case was decided in the 1950s. The facts of the case may remind us of a story told by the Alabama novelist Harper Lee. A black defendant is accused by a white woman of sexual assault. Not rape, in our case, but what we can think of as equivalent to a charge of attempted rape. Let's set aside our justifiable skepticism about the state's evidence of intent. Let's focus on the actus reus issue. Should the court have held, as did the court in Rizzo, that as a matter of law, the accused had not crossed the line from mere preparation to attempt? The complaining witness testified that McWhorter came within two or three feet of her. Unfortunately, the dangerous proximity to success formula would allow the case to go to the jury, in this case, an all-white Alabama jury. The chief of police testified that McWhorter had confessed that his intention was to get the first woman who came by and to carry her into the cotton patch. In the context of the confession, the meaning of McWhorter's approach to the complaining witness seems unmistakable. But aside from the confession, the significance of the accused's conduct is ambiguous. Unless the accused intended harm, his proximity to her presented no danger at all. Some jurisdictions have required that the proximate act show no equivocality. In other words, to constitute an attempt, a proximate act must itself bespeak criminal rather than innocent intent. This additional requirement could have helped McWhorter avoid conviction. In itself, his presence on the street seems entirely innocent. The equivocality test, though, has had its critics. Professor Glanville Williams posed an objection similar to this. Suppose the defendant's diary reveals his intention to burn his neighbor's haystack. Suppose the diary is admissible and, unlike the police chief's testimony in McWhorter, uncontradicted and credible. The defendant was apprehended as he lit a match while standing next to the neighbor's haystack. There is dangerous proximity to success, but the act is equivocal. The defendant was holding a tobacco pipe. It seems silly to dismiss the charge simply because the act of lighting the match was equivocal as between lighting up the pipe and lighting up the haystack. Must the law leave this determined arsonist to pick another occasion to consummate the crime of arson? Perhaps we can look to the model penal code for help. The case of United States versus Jackson shows us the model penal code doctrine in application. The model penal code discards the idea that the actus reus of an attempt crime must include conduct that is dangerously proximate to success. Instead, the key concept is that the defendant must have engaged in conduct which constitutes a substantial step toward commission of the crime. As the court in the case of U.S. versus Mandohano paraphrased the model penal code conception. The substantial step is what carries the accused across the line from mere preparation to attempt. The code provides, a person is guilty of an attempt to commit a crime if he purposely does or omits to do anything 
which, under the circumstances as he believes them to be, constitutes a substantial step that is strongly corroborative of the actor's criminal purpose. Notice that an unequivocality requirement is built into the provision. The step itself must be strongly corroborative of criminal purpose. Let's return to our timeline to see what the model penal code tried to change. A substantial step might be taken without bringing the defendant dangerously close to success. That is, in fact, what the model penal code wants to accomplish. Attempt liability can be triggered earlier in the time sequence, provided that the conduct strongly corroborate criminal purpose. The model penal code adds, lying in wait, searching for, or following, or reconnoitering, if strongly corroborative of criminal purpose, shall not be held insufficient as a matter of law. The intention of the model penal code drafters is to disapprove results like Rizzo, and with the same stroke, to avoid results like McWhorter. Rizzo's searching for the payroll courier was strongly corroborative of an intent to rob. McWhorter's walking on the sidewalk was not strongly corroborative of his intent to rape. Was it? The model penal code introduced one other innovation. Under traditional doctrine, once the line between mere preparation and attempt was crossed, the crime was committed. Abandonment was no defense. The model penal code drafters decided to create an affirmative defense of abandonment. Abandonment is an affirmative defense if complete, voluntary, and properly motivated. In part, this was to compensate for the fact that the substantial step test can trigger liability even in cases that would fail to count as attempts under the dangerous proximity to success test. In part, it was to provide an incentive to the actor to break off an attempt, to give the attempter a continuing incentive to change her mind.